Okay, here we go. The demo. All right, uh, I got a question. I am, I might not look like it, but I am the U.S. brand manager for Lexus. I just, uh, I, I made that career change on Tuesday last week. So I, I gave Oracle two weeks notice, and uh, I got one week to go here, and then I'm off to Lexus. They promised to give me an LFA to drive to and from, my, to and from work. Anyway, so the first thing I want to do, okay, the, Olympic, the Olympics just ended, and I want to, America did very well, the United States did very well in the Olympics, and I want to get everyone driving LFAs. I think it's going to be a very popular car, or, or, some, or some kind of Lexus. It doesn't have to be the LFA. Could be, uh, but I would like everyone, everyone to drive a Lexus. I want people to get excited about my brand. I want to have a big name athlete promote the Lexus. The question is who? Who is the right person to promote the Lexus brand? At, you know, now that just after the Olympics have ended. And the way what we're going to do is we're going to kind of you know, try to figure that out using, you know, crowdsourcing the information using the huge, a huge amount of data, this, we picked Twitter. And we really built this application. And, it's, it's very, and, and actually a lot of surprising information came out of it. Uh, so what we did is we, uh, over a t about a 10 day period, we pulled, right after the Olympics, we pulled f almost five billion tweets from what's called the Twitter Firehose. The Twitter Firehose is a set of APIs whereby you can access the Twitter you know, the stream of tweets from Twitter. So we used the, the Firehose APIs, we accessed Twitter, and we loaded all of those tweets, five billion of them, into an Oracle database. Now to really analyze the tweets, we're gonna have to use a combination of technology, not only the Oracle database for analyzing some of the structured data, uh, information, but also NDECA for analyzing the unstructured information. And we're gonna have to do it simultaneously. It's not good enough to do just structured or just unstructured. We're going to have to do both, as it turns out, to answer this question. It sounds like a simple, it's a very simple question, very complicated data processing to get the underlying answer. And we're, we're not going to do it using batch technology. We're going to do it all in real time. It's a lot of data. And it's actually worse than I said, because a tweet, it's not just 140 characters. There's a lot, of, a lot of structured information in tweet. There are geotags. We know uh, where the person was, if geo's enabled, where the person was when they sent this tweet. We know what time they sent the tweet. Uh, we know what kind of device they use when they sent the tweet. We have a lot of information beyond just the 140 characters. We know how many followers this person has. We know a lot, we have a lot of information. So that five billion tweets blows up to a much bigger data set than five billion tweets. We end up with over 25 billion relationships, a lot. 100 million authors, a lot of mentions. So, so uh, again, again a, lo in, a, a lot of people, people who are mentioned, a lot of you know, products that are mentioned in the body, that 140 character body of the tweets, obviously, there's hashtags and a bunch of other information. Anyway, we end up with this enormous database. Starting with the tweets, then that thing explodes and gets much bigger. Well, big data, meet big iron. So we have the ideal set of, you can applaud if you want to, you don't have to. <laughs> big data, meet big iron. We have the ideal set of tools to do real-time data processing, real-time analysis of big data. Uh, we have, actually, these, are, uh, these, these two machines are now la you know, yesterday's news. We've announced the successors to, uh, to these machines. But uh, we did the, again, we did this right after the Olympics and uh, before the X, X3 was available. So this is the X2-8 and the LX, uh, Xalytics X2-4 interconnected with InfiniBand. Uh, again, we have all of the Oracle BI Foundation running at 
Neptune for in-memory app data processing, running in Exolytics. Uh, we have uh, the Oracle database, version 11.2, uh, uh, running uh, in the Exadata database machine. Uh, again, interconnected by the world's fastest network. Okay, uh, so let me go. I'm going to have to move over here. And this is going to be exciting. Can we switch to the computer, please? Okay, so it's very interesting. Uh, these are these are the you can see up here. We've got the five billion tweets, and that exploded into a large. This is a dashboard. This is a, an Oracle Business Intelligence dashboard. Uh, Running on, you know, running on, uh, being produced by Exolytics in real time, and you can see it's a pretty, pretty large data set. It's big data, five billion tweets, over 27 billion relationships, you know, almost a billion hashtags, and so on. Here's the first kind of interesting piece of data that surprised me. It didn't surprise me that Apple was the most popular mobile device, or that Android was number two. It did really surprise me that BlackBerry was almost as big as Android and not that much smaller than Apple. I was really, you know, everyone talking about the end of BlackBerry, but look at this, real data, real data, and as a mobile device, not that far behind. Go figure. Be interesting. If I was, a, if I was uh, an investor, I might buy a little bit of that, you know, that Brimstock. I'm not making any recommendations, by the way. Let me, let, let me just do a little legal disclaimer here. Uh, I do not own, never have owned any rim stock, and I may or may not be Larry Ellison. This is a, and please ignore everything I say. I think that was kind of in the previous thing we, I think it's called safe harbor statement. Okay. All right, so, I, I mean, kind of interesting. Not, not really the question I was trying to answer, but kind of an interesting, interesting piece of uh, data. So right now, we're doing a tweet analysis, and we're looking at the data by source. Now I'm going to click on this, and I'm going uh, to change it to topic. And so this is what the tweets are about. The most popular topic was society by a long, t by a long uh, shot. Second is leisure. I happen to love leisure myself. And the third, uh, third is the Olympics. And you can see the huge spike of activity uh, in this date range around, around the Olympics. So they're really, the, the Twitterverse got very, very active uh, during, uh, during the Olympics. So let's look at basically the top people, the top, I guess the word celebrity is what we use, the top celebrities who are Olympic athletes. And this is, a, this is an interesting measure because the first measure, we're going to rank all of the Olympic athletes. Again, we want to hire one of these guys or gals to promote Lexus. Uh, we want to rank all of the Olympic athletes by followers. And you can see uh, LeBron James is by far the biggest, has lots of followers, and Serena Williams, Car Carmelo Anthony, and so on. And I mean, that's it's kind of interesting, but. It, Followers is not the right metric for us. We, just because they have a lot of followers doesn't mean they're the right, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, LeBron James plays in the NBA every year and has accumulated these followers over a long period of time. Again, uh, from the point of view of the Olympics, he, he may, uh, he, you know, it, it, it may be somewhat different. He has the most followers. So, look, so we invented another another idea called reach, looking at just the Olympic range, that 10, day, 10 14 day period for the Olympics. And reach is during that 14 day period that followers covers their entire lifetime on Twitter. Reach is the number of tweets, retweets, and mentions during the Olympic Games. A very different kind of measure. Now, again, mentions mean we have to do textual analysis, uh, analyze the unstructured data, find how often LeBron is mentioned or whoever is mentioned uh, uh, during you know during that ten day uh, ten day period, and how many people retweeted his tweets and so on. Again, during that ten day period, 
And let's do that analysis. First, okay, we're, first it's by followers. Now let's change this to this reach value I just described. LeBron is still first, but notice that Serena drops from second uh, down to eighth. And Ryan Lochte moves up to second, where Ryan Lochte didn't have close to as many followers. Ryan Lochte has moved from fairly low to fairly high, looking at this new measure, which you would think that, I mean, obviously Ryan Lochte's, a lot of people never heard of him before the, this most recent Olympic Games. Most people never heard of him before the most recent Olympic Games. All right, so this is an analysis or a list of the celebrities or athletes by their Olympic reach, by, you know, uh, ranked by the Olympic tweets, uh, retweets, and mentions. Now let's, let's go over here to this tab and analyze the audience for these athletes. All right, notice we still have the same athletes over here on the left, LeBron James, Ryan Lochte, and so on. And interesting, here's a, here's a geographic dis, uh, distribution of those five billion or so tweets. Notice how many come from the UK and the UK, UK, Scotland, the general area of the UK. I mean, this is very important. Let's say we're a t-shirt company and we're trying and we want to sell Ryan Lochte 200 pound t-shirts. Picture of Ryan in his bathing suit and you can wear. And we need to know, we want to do that promotion in London and let people know where, and we want to send that, you know, send that out to people who are near our store uh, and we probably want to qualify them that they're fairly wealthy and not very smart if they spend 200 pounds for a Ryan Lochte t-shirt. I know how, that's, a, that's a separate query. That's a separate analysis of, of, of audience, of who, to, who to do the promotion to. But it is interesting, again, that we see that you would think the United States would have, you know, the most uh, Twitter activity, but around the Olympic time and the Olympic tweets, no, it was actually coming from the UK. Now, analyzing the that's a geographic analysis, a geographic distribution of the audience. Uh, and obviously, we got got that where the tweet was where the tweet the tweet device was geo enabled. You can enable and disable that. But also, we're going to analyze the audience, looking at you know these these guys have lots of interest beyond the uh, beyond the Olympics. So the guys who follow these athletes have other interests. And remember, the thing we're interested in is cars. We're trying to find out the name of the person who. Does, who will be the ideal spokesperson for Lexus. All right, so you see down here, again, music, food, so on, football, and finally we get to cars. So let's drill in on this and rank the celebrities this time by mentions about, mentions about cars. So people who are interested in cars, just looking at the, let's just reduce the number of tweets to only take the tweets about cars and see how many of them, uh, how they rank these celebrities. Or what, what the reach is for these celebrities. Okay, on cars, things change dramatically. All of a sudden, LeBron has dropped to eighth and Michael Phelps has r gone to number one. And Gabby Douglas has shown up from nowhere. I mean, Gabby is the, as I'm sure you remember, was the uh, the Olympic gold medal winner for all in gymnastics for the all around, and led our team to the Olympic gymnastics gold medal. And she was was she was way down on the list uh, until we focused on cars. This is an enormously complicated query that where Exalytics had to send it back to Exadata to do multi-pass SQL, to go ahead and do this analysis. And we had to analyze, use both the Oracle database and NDECA to, to handle both structured and unstructured information. This is complicated stuff all happening in real time. Most people, when they talk about processing big data, they do think about doing it in batch. Really a big map reduce, a big map reduce batch program. Uh, in this case, we're using Big Iron, Exadata, Exalytics, in-memory technology, and DECA, the Oracle database, to process unstructured and structured data in memory in real time.
Okay. We're getting very close. We got one last query. We want to do this by brand. Now it's not just going to be cars in general, but we're going to break it up by brand. And here's the reference analysis. Oops. How do I back? Okay. All right. Here is the reference analysis. Now this is very interesting. Okay, so we got the answer to our question. The answer to our question is Gabby Douglas. I'm going to come back to Gabby with a second choice of Michael Phelps. Um, you know, I would really, if I'm Toyota, well, before I make that comment, let me just go down and, and, and describe this screen. Uh, the, if we look at, at, we look at the different hashtag groups, different communities uh, that are interested in Lexus, and we've done sentiment analysis on the tweets. That is, if people said, I hate Lexus, or my Lexus burst into flames, and they tweeted that, we consider that a red or negative tweet. I'm not sure, you know, or the insurance on my LFA costs more than my house. You know, that would be a negative tweet. So we've actually used our, you know, Endeka technology to look at the tweet and establish, is it a positive comment? Is it a neutral comment? Or is it a negative comment? And these groups, uh, we see here, we only have one negative group you can see, and that's on insurance. That's popular. They're playful. If I showed you more of it, there's a lot more negative stuff. Uh, but uh, the neutral, the neutral uh, tweets are in gray, and they're not used in the calculation, uh, other than say how often they're how often they, they occur. Uh, the positive tweets are in green, and the negative tweets are in red. So. Uh, just a general comment about cars is considered neutral. Uh, mention of the Toyota brand is considered positive. And a uh, mention of the LFA supercar is considered positive. And a mention of the Nurburgring, the N24, Nurburgring 24-hour race is considered a positive. And lots of people who talk about Lexus talk about the N24. This gives me, me as a brand manager, I know we're thinking of entering an LFA in, the, in that race next year. A lot of people who are interested in Lexus follow that race closely, so I, I, I get the insight. That's not a bad place to spend money. We should, send a, we, ha, we should have an entry in that race. We should do promotions around that race. But again, this is analyzing big data to get insights about our customers and our potential customers and what's the best way to promote our brands to those customers. And finally, the right spokesman, and I'm very excited about this as the LFA brand, or excuse me, as the Lexus brand manager. The right spokesperson uh, for this is clearly Gabby Douglas. And I'm definitely going to offer her a lot of money for this deal because, you know, Michael Phelps is six foot five and Gabby Douglas isn't even five feet tall. And so she's going to make those Toyotas, those Lexuses look really big and luxurious. So I want her in my commercials, not this big swimmer. So we're going to make her a, a big offer. So again, you can, you can look at this. This was a very simple question that required an enormous amount of sophisticated data processing to get the answer to. But we can now get the answer. We now have access to this data about what people say about our products, what people say about our services. We can now analyze that and get said, do sentiment analysis, figure out what topics are important to these people and figure out who are the most influential, influential spokespeople. This is something that we've just had to guess at in the past. This is sophisticated technology processing big data. And that's it.